You should quit design school. That's it, kids. That's the tweet. If you want to be a professional graphic designer in 2022 and beyond, you do not need college. I already know I'm going to get roasted for this one, but we're going anyway. It's July, and so you've probably already made your fall semester commitments, but I'm telling you, if you can get out of them, do so. I'm your Uncle Dave, the black sheep of the family, and I'm going to tell you what to do instead. But before I do that, three things. Number one, uh, there's a fan going on in the background. It's very hot in here, so it's you're, deal with it. Number two... I'm gonna tell you all of the things, all the reasons why I believe that design school is a scam. And number three, do me a favor and hit the like button because I'm about ready to save your life or at the very least save you a crap load of money. Let's go, come on! Reason number one, the design school is a scam is because most design schools are broke. Art and design departments in most colleges are usually underfunded. Because of that, most of the technology that you're using when you're in the school is behind the times. You are not working with the most modern equipment, and that's a shame because you're spending so much money on this school. Here's a fun fact. Most art and design professors are adjunct. They're not even full-time professors. They're not even tenured, so they're not getting paid nearly as well as some of the other professors in other departments. If you were an art and design professor at one of these schools and you knew you were number one, getting paid less than everybody else, number two, not guaranteed a job, number three, working with less than stellar equipment, how enthused are you going to be to teach these kids? Instead, save that college tuition and put it into the best possible computer you can and then go and work that computer to death. Make some money off of it, put some aside, and then when that computer dies, you turn right around and buy the next best computer. Saving college tuition will help you keep your hardware up to date, will help you keep you up to date on software, and you know, but also have a little bit of extra money in your pocket to go do other fun things while your friends and your peers are out there studying. I mean, you should be doing your studying too, but we'll get to that. Something else you can do is invest in a bunch of the best design books out there. In fact, I've got a few right here. Here's one, A Kid's Guide to Graphic Design by Chip Kidd. This will teach you all the fundamentals that you need to know. And if you need to know more than what you learn in this book, you can always go research it. Making the grid, breaking the grid. Can't deny the importance of this book. If you haven't bought it yet, you should have it in your arsenal. David Carson's End of Print, I've talked about this one a lot, and the reason that you should have it is because if you ever wanted to break the rules in graphic design, this is the guy you should learn from. Our man Aaron Draplin talk about the complete opposite of David Carson. This is the dude, and he talks about his process and all the things that he's done and everything you could possibly learn from big fat lines. A lesser known entity, somebody I learned a lot from and somebody you could probably learn a lot from is Art Chantry. In this book, Some People Can't Surf. It's an older book, but it's definitely worth the read. And it's got crazy good visuals. Dude, look at all that good stuff. James Victoria's first monograph, or Who Died and Made You Boss. As far as independence goes, this is the guy you want to learn from. He's also got another book called Feck Perfection. Get that one too. Oh, and, and then these. Austin Cleon's not a designer, but you can learn a lot from him, I promise you. Okay, well that's the best I'm gonna have to clean up. Number two reason why design school is mostly a scam is because most professors don't come from the professional world. Many of them may have tried to be in the professional world, but they couldn't hack it, so they became teachers. That's a little unfair to a lot of them. Some people went in directly to be teachers, which is cool, except they don't have any professional experience. They probably weren't out there in the real world working, so they don't know what real world situations happen when they design things. Or if they were in the real world, it probably wasn't with a prominent design agency or ad agency. They're probably working in some small little shop, felt like they needed to change, so they decided to go teach. Not a whole lot of senior art directors or creative directors trying to become professors. Maybe some, but not a ton. Or if there are senior art directors trying to become professors, it's because their career has on the downslope and they're just trying to find something else to fill the gap because all the youngins have taken over all the jobs. Ageism is a thing, guys. Trust me. Look at this beard. Another major factor in this is that most professors have hundreds of different students every single semester, and they have very little time for your specific needs. They may be able to tell you some things, but they're not willing to spend the time on you as long as you possibly need. Instead, what I recommend you do is go get a job. Because when I need a job done, I get someone with a job to do that job. Go get a job with somebody who's willing to teach you how to do things but like boots on the ground getting the knowledge from somebody that's doing the stuff ask lots of questions don't fear the critique make sure you're absorbing as much as you possibly can speaking from experience the first two months i spent working at my very first job i learned way more than i did my entire career in college that's not a joke that's a real thing number three the college experience is overrated. All that rah, 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 sis, boom, ba, go team, go. Hey, meet you in the quad. Let's go have lunch. All that stuff. That's cool. It's fun. But I'm telling you right now, 
Most of those people that you hang out with at college, you're never going to see them again. And if you do hang out with them again, by the time you hit your 30s, you will have grown apart. You'll be like, that person's a doofus. Or maybe they're saying that about you. At some point, you're just going to be like, I don't really need to hold on to these relationships anymore. Why did I just spend a hundred? Fifty thousand dollars to hang out with people I don't really like. Maybe it's just me, but I'm not on the same planet as the people I went to college with, and they probably do think the same thing about me. Look, if you want to go to a football game once in a while, go for it. Be my guest, but I'm telling you, that's not the answer. Instead, go learn by osmosis. You need a community? Go join the AIGA. Don't know what the AIGA is? Go look it up. Go to design conferences because some of the best relationships I have now are from people that I met at conferences that I went to. And if you're really desperate to go hang out with some of the college kids, then go hang out with your friends. If they're in design school, cool. Then you can learn from them based on what their personal experience is. But they're also going to have some questions for you because you've been boots on the ground doing the work, something they haven't even had a chance to do yet. Instead, they've been sitting in humanities courses and learning how to do, you know, other things like math. No designers need calculus. I could be wrong about that one. There might be some designers that use calculus. I doubt it though. Number four reason design school is a scam is because, you know, that whole uh, getting away from the parents so I can have my independence. Well, that's, you know, that's a little overrated. If you go to design school and then you graduate, the most likely outcome is you're going to end up back home anyway. What would be cooler is that if you stayed home, sucked it up for a little while, made some money doing your own thing, save some of that, put it aside so that you can go get your first apartment. And then meanwhile, when your friends are graduating from their colleges and they're coming home and they're sleeping on their parents' couch because the mom turned it into a she shed, you could be in your own apartment doing your work, hanging out with the whoever it is you want to hang out with, all those friends coming over to your place, you're going to be the hero. For what it's worth, I don't recommend inviting a bunch of people over for parties because if you ruin your lease, then that's going to be expensive too. It's Uncle Dave talking. Number five, and this one's going to be pretty obvious, but it's stupid expensive and you're going to spend the rest of your life paying it off. If you have to be like me, you needed student loans, well, I'm telling you it's gonna be a thorn in your side for a very long time you could buy a tesla model s for how much it costs to go to risd for one year i mean if you did have the money you decided to go buy a tesla model s at least you'd be doing your part to to cut the dependence off of fossil fuel. Instead, you've got four years of college debt driving a tercel and sleeping on your mom's couch so what do you do instead Take that money and go travel. There is no better teacher than the in-person experience. And the best teacher in the world is the world. Go find places that inspire you to make things. When I graduated, I was saddled with tremendous debt. And it took me a really long time. I couldn't go travel anywhere. When I finally shucked some of that responsibility, finally got rid of most of that, I was able to go travel the world. And then I turned to myself and I said, Dave, why did it take you so long to do this thing? Take the money and go travel now. I promise you, you will not regret it. Number six, there are no guarantees. You will likely not have a job waiting for you when you get out. Don't let the schools lie to you. That diploma will not open doors like you think it will. That four-year degree requirement that you see on some of these job listings, that's not about what college you went to. It's about the fact that you were able to finish something that you started, which is actually kind of contrary to what I'm telling you to do because I'm telling you to quit. Maybe you can finish something else that you've started that will show the same diligence that they're looking for. And let's be honest, the four-year degree requirement is quickly becoming passe. And number seven, and this is the big one, you are not guaranteed to be good when you get out. In fact, you will probably suck. I've seen the portfolios of people who graduated from prestigious schools, and I can tell you for sure that 90% of the portfolios that I've ever seen in my lifetime have pretty much sucked. Neither the diploma nor the institution that they got it from mattered a lick. College may seem like the cool thing to do, all your friends are probably gonna end up doing, but let me tell you, for a designer, there are better paths. So what do we do instead? It's an acronym I call ERPS. Inquire, research, practice, share. Inquiring is about asking questions, but not just any questions, it's about asking the right questions. When you have specific problems, ask yourself how you might be able to answer it and where might you find that information. Be honest with yourself about those questions because sometimes it will require you to ask questions about yourself that you may not want to hear the answer to. And once you know what some of these questions are, then researching them is easier to do. If it's technical, you'll probably end up here on YouTube. If it's philosophical or requires, you know, something from your peers, then go check online. There's plenty of subreddits about design. Just don't get distracted by some of those other subs. You know the ones I'm talking about. Then go practice just in time learning. Go learn something and then practice what you learned. It doesn't matter what you learn. Learn it, practice it. Learn more, 
practice more. Learn, practice, learn, practice, learn, practice. Keep that strategy up and I guarantee you, you will win. Instead of the perpetual learning machine that college is, go learn the thing and then practice it because that will forge it in your mind and it will become solid and you'll be like, God, I've got that. I've got the answer to that question and it's gonna be there forever until you get as old as me and start forgetting all the things. So you've inquired, you've learned, you've practiced. Now go share it. Share it on social media, share it with your friends, share it with your peers, share it with your mom. I don't care. But instead of just going in and saying, hey, look at the cool thing I made, share with an opportunity to learn. Embrace the critique. Ask for it. Bring it in. Be open and honest. Be fearless. Let people find the holes in your work so that you can go fix them. And don't let your ego get in the way. Humility and grace in the face of criticism is a valuable asset. And if you are trying to get a job in the design world, I guarantee you that will win points. And there's nothing college can do to teach you that stuff. It's one of these things you just have to learn as you go. But I definitely recommend that you learn it as fast as you can. And finally, embrace the suck because you're going to be bad for a while. And that's okay. We all went through that suck period, but do all the things and you'll be less sucky soon. Want to speed up the suck less process? Watch this video right here, okay? Be good today, be even better tomorrow. See ya. Your parents are gonna kill me. Erps. <laughs>